Thank you very much and welcome to Time So um, Honorable uh, yourself, Job. Or do you briefly tell us about yourself, where do you come from and what made you be part of PIP as we speak? And we understand your uh, acting clerk of the parliament. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Yusuf Job, as you have st rightly pronounced it, which is impressive, because usually they get the surname wrong. Uh, I'm originally from the Gambia, and, uh, and I worked in various international organizations, including the World Bank and United Nations, before joining the African uh, body of the Pan-African Parliament in Mitran, in, in South Africa. Uh, I'm a chartered accountant by profession, and um, basically I was mainly hired as deputy clerk in charge of finance, admin, and human resource. But uh, in the absence of a clerk, I am also doubling up as the clerk of the parliament in the interim. Then, uh, would you briefly uh, give us a, pre a background about what is PAP and what is it doing for Africa? The Pan-African parliament was um, set up mainly as the body that serves as a legislative organ of the African Union. As you know, most continental uh, uh, organizations have also parliamentary organizations so that they can harmonize their activities and harmonize their laws to be applicable to all the uh, country, continent. And uh, similar to what obtains in Europe with the European Parliament, the African um, governments in their wisdom realized that they too needed to come together to have a parliament where they would discuss issues that are relevant to the whole continent and whereby the, the, the parliament can now also enact laws that will be applicable to all of Africa. And this way it will be easier uh, when one travels within the continent. You won't have to worry about what laws do I apply in Gabon, which ones do I apply in Algeria. If we have a harmonious uh, legal system, then, then it makes it easy to move, for people to move and not worry about legal implications and also to generally make it easier to implement these legal uh, activities throughout the continent. So what is the current situation probably in, in, in all these five regions that have been represented? Okay, the PAP comprises of uh, 54 African countries and um, uh, every country has five members of parliament that comes to the PAP. And we have two plenary sessions, one in May and one in October. And we have two major committee sessions. The committee sessions are in March and in August. So uh, these MPs will come together and discuss issues that affect the continent, such as terrorism, such as uh, uh, women and youth issues such as um, issues relating to, to, to gender, issues relating to, um, uh, how do I call it, uh, illicit funds. And they deliberate on them and then they make pronouncements which are then submitted to the African Union for endorsement and ratification. Yeah, then coming to the situation and all these uh, ratification, which I believe you'll break them down for us, mm -hmm. uh, talking about Lesotho, are there any important benefits that you think Lesotho can get from APAP? Yes, uh, Lesotho is a very important part of the African continent. And um, it's, although inside of South Africa in terms of geography, but they have a unique uh, history. And uh, if you look at it, uh, being a country that has uh, no access by itself surrounded, the issue of unification of the continent, uh, uniformity of laws, uh, lifting of the borders and passport issues would make a huge impact to the economy of this country and to the free movement of people. Uh, this is my first visit to Lesotho, but experiencing at the border crossing seeing the number of vehicles and the number of hours they take to cross into the border within the same continent, it, it's just mind-boggling. And it's very, very, very uh, difficult to, to create an enabling environment for business, a thriving environment with people having to queue for nine, 10 hours to cross a border within Africa. So if the African Union uh, plans of having an African passport, which is part of the things that the uh, Pan-African Parliament is pushing, if the African Union and the PAP uh, issues of lifting the borders and having free movement of our people is, is, is done, you won't have this queue. 
people can drive in and out of South Africa, they can drive in and out of Swaziland. We are one people, we are one Africa. Why do we have to go through all this hassle of having to get visas, of having to queue hours to get into our own continent? So in the long run, also for laws, there are general laws that affect a lot of issues you know, female circumcision and other things. If these laws are put in by PAP and applicable to the whole uh, continent, then it also applies to any other country. And I'm sure the, the Lesotho uh, government and parliament are keen to have these things uh, put in place. Yeah, the, 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 um, does it mean all these member states um, might be moving very slow towards uh, rectifying all or accepting all these uh, the ratifications? Yeah, the ratification has been very slow. And um, one thing that uh, members need to realize is that this protocol, this new protocol of PAP is very critical because this new protocol is putting into place what is necessary to make the parliament really functional as a legislative organ. In addition, knowing that women play a very important role in Africa, the new protocol is increasing the number of women representation in the Pan-African parliament. Currently, it's only one you are required out of the five to be only one woman. But now, with parity and all these things, we are saying minimum two. And some countries like Rwanda, in fact, the majority of MPs that are coming are women. There's four and only one man. And this is the way to go if we want to have more emancipation of women, more development and inclusive growth. We have to have more uh, people ratify this protocol. And the protocol also does another thing. It helps in ensuring that we divorce the political leadership from the administrative leadership. Right now, uh, they are all mixed up. But the moment it is ratified, it's now the secretariat is secretariat and runs administrative affairs, whilst the political bureau deals with other issues. And many, many other important aspects. So we currently have about seven or eight countries that have now ratified the protocol. But we need 28. We have 12 that signed. But they are yet to deposit it to the African Union. Why is it moving so slow? Because, you know, uh, some are, it's a, it's a, how do I call it, advocacy issue. Because a lot of the countries don't know the importance that PAP plays and the role it plays. Uh, you know, we haven't been more aggressive to get ourselves into the continent for other people to know. Since the PAP was set up, we were just based in South Africa, mid run They come and meet and they go away. And five members out of the entire parliament is not a lot. So you find out that the visibility of PAP was lacking. We've gone aggressively to change that uh, with the new with the president, Nkododang, the new president from Cameroon. He's been very aggressive going into all the countries, meeting the leadership, telling them the relevance of PAP and what it can do if they ratify. And since we've embarked on such thing, we've had more impact. Actually, the, the protocol was set up in 2014, but you, you find out that for a whole year, nothing happened. But with the new bureau, the president and the four new vice presidents, we've gone on a strong you know, advocacy campaign. And in a period of one year, we were able to get seven from only one. So, and also the signatures have increased tremendously. And once they sign, it's just to submit it to the AU for it to be ratified, uh, to, be, to be deposited. You know. So we are very hopeful that this coming year, before 2018, we would be able to have the numbers needed to run this parliament uh, with the new protocol. From the last session you just had, uh, I uh, 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 was it promising uh, with regard to some of the challenges that the president mentioned out, we talk about population growth, growth especially within youth. Mm. Uh, are there any challenges, any promising factors that we see now, uh, all these member states are moving towards the right, right direction? Yes, I would say it's very promising because I think the activities and agendas of youth and women have been put to the forefront. Last year, we had uh, the human rights focus with special emphasis on women. And we had a lot of events. For example, 8th of March was, was the women, Women's Day. And PAP goes now all the way out to ensure that we have programs specifically devoted for youths. Uh, we are working hard for the youth parliament to be established. We always have forums where we invite youths to, to deliberate on issues affecting them, for them to be involved in actually setting the trend and the agenda, so that we, we are not only dictating to the youths, but we are receptive to what is their needs, what do they want, how do we fulfill their ambitions. Because you know, the, the olden days, you just tell the children what you want, but now the world has evolved. 
and the youths know what they want. So we have now opened our doors more receptive to listening to them, getting their input, getting their directive, and then putting our efforts and, um, and our resources to making sure that we fulfill that. And I think it's promising because all the continent organs and also the, 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 the governments are very serious about fulfilling this. So what about the committees maybe involved under PAP? Mm -hmm. uh, are they functionally doing well towards achieving the, the, the goal, the, the targets of the PAP? The committees are very crucial and they are actually doing tremendously well. In the past, uh, the committees just meet and they disappear. But now, whatever resolution they take comes up in the forefront at the AU summits. And not only that, the committees now are dealing with matters that are continental in approach. Transportation, infrastructure, and they're deliberating with issues that now they want every government to take on board. The PAR committee responsible for, for gender is very, very, very serious about how we deal with gender issues. How we ensure that there's balance, there's parity, there's equality, there's, there's, there's a whole movement to ensure that the women are given forefront and are given the enabling environment to, to, to thrive. But not only that, every time these committees deliberate, they come out with issues that they pass on into their various parliaments to put in place. And that is also taking effect. We are seeing the impact of some of our decisions. Agenda 2063, which was set up and developed at the AU, has now been put into PAP to be the implementing agency, to be one of the key people to roll it out you know, uh, 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 disseminate it into the, into the uh, continent. So this domestication is now also part of the agenda that the committees take seriously and are working on. In the past, you find out that there's rules, there's issues, there's policies, and then they are just put on nicely on a package and put on a shelf. But now when we take it on board in PAP, in our committees, it goes in. We domesticate it into the various national parliaments, and then it rolls into the continent as a whole. And uh, coming to constitutionalizing this PAP, who, who plays a vital role here? Who constitutes the PAP? As I said, uh, the PAP is uh, composed, comprise, uh, composed of the all members of the African continent. And now the new member, Morocco, who left and came back is also part of it. Uh, it's mainly every country has a right, as long as you are an African Union member, to be part of PAP and then you delegate five members of your parliament to come. Uh, we, we're moving to the direction whereby later we will have universal suffrage, whereby the MPs will not be just uh, appointed by their parliament to come, but they will be voted by the people of their country themselves. And they will be permanent members and based in PAP and dealing with PAP African continent issues, how just like the European parliament. How are they going to be voted in? from their member states? Yeah, uh, uh, currently, you know, once you are a member of parliament in your country and you go to your parliament, you can choose within the parliament who should come and represent. But I'm saying the future plan with the new uh, protocol is that later on we will have people like you will stand and say, I want to be the, among the five that will be representing Lesotho in the parliament. So you will contest with other people in Lesotho, other parliamentarians, and people will vote okay, we want him, or we want this one, or we want that one. There might be maybe 20 MPs that will stand to say we want to be representing Lesotho at the parliament, and the people of the country will vote. Unlike now where you vote in your region as an MP, then you go to parliament, and the parliament chooses, you see. So that is the new feature change that is being... Uh, yeah, again, one of the major challenges in Africa within youth is employment. And I know perhaps we have been talking about e-waste uh, projects that might be involved. Mm -hmm. how, 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 what's your view towards that? Yeah, employment is very, very critical. And um, if you look at it, we are losing a lot of our youths taking the back road and dying in the sea. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very, very sad. And all because they, they want to do something. They want to be part of the development of their countries. They don't want to just sit around after going through high school and sit and still have their parents feed and clothe and give them everything. So we have to have a, a new directive, a new direction, new impetus to develop employment projects that specifically target the youths. And I tell you what, our youths are more dynamic and more uh, resourceful and, and, and um, diligent than even the Western youths. 
They learned everything. They go to internet cafes, they read books in the library. If you take a youth from Lesotho and you take him on a podium with somebody from another European country and you ask them international affairs, or you will be shocked that the Lesotho youth would be far you know, ahead of what the other youths from Europe or America is. It's all because we are keen, our youths are keen. What they need is the tools. What they need is the guidance. They, need, they just need to be, uh, uh, we need to be creative in how we look after them. We need to find out what is it, how can we create the employment that they yearn for. Because they might have projects in their mind. They might have a lot of things and the ideas are good. All they need is somebody to, you know, take them step by step on how to get a business plan in place. In the Gambia, for example, where I come from, we have the Empretec program. This Empretec program, if you have an idea as a youth, you come in, you, you discuss and explain this idea on how you want to fulfill it, what it will uh, need in terms of resources, what benefit it will have, and they help you to develop a business plan, a project plan, free of charge. And then they can even give you seed money, an amount based on what your plan is, to put it in place, and then give it to you in pieces. So if you say, okay, my business plan is over the five years, I'm gonna employ 50 youths doing agricultural uh, activity or doing um, IT activity, then they will give you, okay, this year, how much do you need? They'll give it to you and then you report back. They see how much you have achieved, what you have done, and then they give you the next tranche. And a lot of youths have done projects that have been now so successful. They're employing 50 to 100 people. If you do that, to all these youths with all the ideas and all the things that they have, you will see the youth employment increase and take a, another dimension. So uh, would that be an answer maybe pro on the intra-trade Africa? Mm -hmm. If maybe all these youths are brought together mm -hmm. and also help um, PAP mm -hmm. uh, reach its targets if mm -hmm. implement its mandate fully mm -hmm. in this country? Yeah, definitely. And I tell you what, uh, we, we are targeting to have a youth conference this year, whereby we will bring youths from all over Africa to discuss common things. What is it that and how do they think the parliament can help in resolving their issues or the AU as a whole, because the parliament is part of the African Union. And I think if we put together the, 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 the ideas that these youths have, you will see a big, big, big thing come out of it. In fact, if you look at the ideas that the youths come up with, they're so innovative. You, 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 all they need is just seed money, guidance, you know, and they will take off. We need to focus on them because they are our future. The, the future of this continent is in the hands of the youth. And unless we give them the, 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 the enabling environment to be there, they will continue to go to Europe or America or even die on the way and we'll have the brain drain. You go to Europe and America and all these other continents, you find out that actually is African youths that are creating things over there. People that have emigrated or went for studies. And these people are smart. When they see you are very intelligent and you are doing well, they encourage you to stay in their countries. So it's not that for you, it's for them. Because they know you will create employment, you will create development, you will add to their... So why is Africa not doing the same to keep its youths here? And even pull those youths that are out there who are Africans to come back home. I was in Rwanda recently during their national consultative dialogue and the government of Rwanda is giving money to youths from Rwanda who are overseas in the diaspora to come back home to be part of their developmental work. And when you come home, they'll give you computers, they'll give you an office, they'll give you some money to start your business. And all of a sudden, they already have about five or ten that are employing hundreds of people that have come from Canada, from the USA. They decided to live that fancy life. They want to, their countries to be like those countries. They don't want to live in Canada. They don't want to live in the US. They want to live in Africa. But give them the encouragement, the motivation, and the resources, and the support for them to come back. Do you think our government in Africa, the, the parliament in Africa are doing well enough to help or support those youths or even in, uh, increase their social economy? Uh, I would say some countries are doing better than others. But overall, we all now realize, most African countries realize that the future of the country are in the hands of the youths. And most realize that 
we should tap the resources that are in the diaspora. We should bring our people back with the knowledge and funding and everything that they have. If you look at the outflows that are coming back, resources that we are getting back from the diaspora, in some countries that's basically what they are surviving on. Now, those people are running businesses and doing things in Europe or America. They are not sitting down and f finding money in the streets. They are actually earning it. The, what they are doing in Europe and America, they can do in their countries if they give the enabling environment for them to come and resettle. The countries need to open their doors to the diaspora. They need to create an enabling environment for the youths to come back, give them the incentive, give them the tools, give them the funding, and we will take back what is ours. Those people in the diaspora should come and help us to kickstart everything that they are doing over there and do it in our continent and develop our continent and our countries to the level that we will surpass the Europeans and Americans. As we wrap up our interview now, I don't know, what is it that you can share with us with all these ratification protocols and maybe a plea to all these member states, Lesotho, with all the challenges might be in Lesotho and what is it that PEP can answer, can be an answer to Lesotho? Thank you very much. I think the main thing is um, I want to appeal to the African continent and to the governments and the leadership to realize that Africans are one people and we have a common destiny. Whether we like it or not, if you develop as one country and your neighbors are poor and suffering, you are not going to be having a good time because those people that are suffering and poor will be fleeing into your country in numbers that you cannot control, just like the, our people are going into Europe. So we are in this road together and we have to hold each other's hands. We have to have generic policies that cover the continent and work towards unifying the continent. We have to dismantle these colonial borders that have been created by Western powers to divide us, to keep us apart. These things, we are not there. We were not, we were all one Africa. You could move from South Africa to Gambia, Senegal to, to Lesotho. All you need is money or something or, or, or a, a mobile activity to be able to, to get where you're going. As long as you are a black person in this world, you are considered African. They don't care where you come from. So since we are being treated as one, let us know that our destiny is one. Let us work together, put our heads and minds together and help this continent to go forward. And we can do it. We have the human capital. We have the resources. The resources that develop those countries are ours. And still they are here. Why they want to keep us apart is because they still want to steal those resources. They need those resources. So they don't want the Africans to put their heads together to maximize their benefit. They want to divide us so that when they come, this one will be fighting this one and they will be stealing our resources. So we have to really work as a team, focus on our developmental projects, think of oneness, create transit systems that cover the continent. We have an interrail system that is being developed by the AU to run from Cairo to Senegal. Transport, but if you have to stop at the border every minute and every border to check your passport, what, is, what will be the point of that? So this African passport would also enable that environment remove those border issues. We, we can charge visas for the Europeans and Americans, yes, but Africans, within Africa, moving inside Africa, spending hours on borders, having to get visas, it's a shame. After 60 years or 50 years of independence, we are supposed to take, treat this continent as one country, work towards a harmonious and uniform program and develop together because that's the only hope for the continent. Oh yes, uh, anyway, today in Lesotho, it's all about the Queen's uh, Trust Fund, uh, which is a guarantee party today, mm -hmm. um, and you're part of it today with the uh, members from PIP who are mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be your message to Queen and uh, the, the, the people who contribute towards this fund, mm -hmm. which is actually helping young people to attend school, to go to school? We are very, very honoured to be part of this program and we thank the Queen immensely for having us come here. And I think uh, the, 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 the main theme of this event could not be uh, uh, overemphasized. Female education, women issues to take forefront. As you know, all the countries in Africa that have put women on top of their agenda, they are moving faster than any other countries. Take Rwanda, for example, again. 
we need to help to develop uh, uh, programs and projects and assist the women to have all women should go to school okay men could go to school too but I'm saying it because they were left behind a lot and therefore we are so honored we came here uh, at the invitation to attend this tea party but we are so happy that these things are very very frontal in the issues of Lesotho and it shows how how much this government and this kingdom is moving towards developing its people to the highest level in the world. Thank you very much, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome.